better daily. When we work hard in our minds, bodies, and our spirits to become 1% better every single day, download the app and join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live to catch the video version of these podcasts. Here's your host and my dad, Alex Van Houten. What's up, Betterment family? This is Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Happy Thursday. It is Word Thursday, and I love Word Thursday because I get to share with you some meditations on a word that I think is pertinent, at least to my health and fitness journey and my 1% Better Daily, and I hope it's pertinent to yours. The word today is vanity. I like this word. It's a pretty cool word, actually. So, fun, funny story. I'm, I'm reading Ecclesiastes in preparation for our discussion and prayer over it next week here in the group. So, if you haven't joined us for one of those, that'll be on Tuesday night. Would love to have you to come to that with us. It's a good time. And I'm reading Ecclesiastes. And, and so, uh, I just went on my, my anniversary trip and I'm reading Ecclesiastes. And if you've ever read Ecclesiastes, you know that this is a really fun, book of the Bible to read while you're on a trip surrounded by luxury and leisure. <laughs> What's up, Scott? Good morning. Thanks for joining me. Uh, Ecclesiastes is is really the in the wisdom tradition, the book where the, the teacher, it, in some traditions, it's Solomon. In some traditions, it's people who learned under Solomon. In some traditions, it's cobbled together by by wise men in the Old Testament. Either way, Ecclesiastes is the book where where basically the writer is trying to figure out what the meaning to life is. And he starts the book by saying, vanity, vanity, everything's vanity. There's nothing new under the sun, and it all will pass away in a shadow. So why do anything at all? something like that. And, and it's, it's 12 chapters. The first time I read it, I think I was somewhere in, I think I was like 13 or 14 years old. I didn't understand what I was reading. And then I read it again around 16, 17 years old and I got really depressed. It's a very depressing book. Like, cause well, <laughs> let's talk about the word first and then we'll get to the book. So vanity, it's in English around 12th century, the etymology of the word, it, it, it means futile. It means meaningless worthless, useless, and a whole other host of words that I think you get the picture of. Vanity is is something that doesn't ultimately matter. And if you look at the, the Hebrew context, because that goes way, way further back, Ecclesiastes is one of the places that appears most in the Old Testament, but also appears in Job. A lot of people don't know this, but Job's actually an older book than most of the the Old Testament. Job and Genesis were, were likely written around the same time by uh, most biblical scholar standards. So that's really interesting. And it also appears in Lamentations, which is another very uplifting book. <laughs> I'm just full of sarcasm this morning, <laughs> am I not? Well, depends on what you mean by uplifting, but we won't go there today. Vanity is a very, very interesting and powerful word, and I think it really digs deep down into the core of this whole betterment journey, health and fitness thing. Right. Because because the writer of Ecclesiastes is is looking for the meaning to life and, and recognizes that in the finitude of life, in the tiny little piece of existence that we have, the few few days, years, months, whatever you want to call it, that we live, we're very tiny. We're very small in all of the pleasure and all of the hard work and all of the wisdom and learning and all the meaningful things and even our families like all of those things are so tiny and small compared to infinity. And so why does anything we do matter at all? That's that's the question in Ecclesiastes. And there's some beautiful poetry in it. There's some interesting arguments in it. There's some great, uh, there's some great quotables. Uh, one of my favorite quotables from Ecclesiastes that really doesn't have anything to do with the, the vanity, vanity thing is, uh, he says, pity the man who falls down and has no one to pick him up again. And he talks for a bit about how important it is to, to do life in community. And he doesn't have anything bad to say about that, but he does all the work and he sleeps with all the women and he eats all the food and he, he builds these wonderful things. And he's like, at the end of it, it's all going to be ground to dust and doesn't matter. So like I said, very depressing. book. <laughs> and when I was 16 or 17, I'm like, man, I, 
I hope this isn't the end of the book. And he gets to the end of the book. And he says, after all this is said and done, after we've had this argument, what is man to do? And his conclusion is to love God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole of man. And when I was 16 and 17, I was like, <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm still kind of floundering here because you have vanity and all the, all the depressing vicissitudes of life and, and your finite pleasure seeking, not fulfilling meaninglessness. And his conclusion is to love God and keep his commandments. And I'm, you know, 16, 17 years old. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Honestly, like, how does, because in my mind, it's the 10 commandments, right? It's like, uh, how does not killing people, um, and not stealing and like, how does that make up for my short, short life? And this, this is the health and fitness industry. Go to Instagram. Well, don't, if you don't like Instagram, but you can go to Instagram and you can scroll through and you can find fitness coaches and people and all the stuff like showing their muscles and six pack abs and how to look like me and all the fitness teas and the fat burning supplements and the blah, blah, blah. And well, <laughs> it's almost like they were looking to create a definition for vanity. <laughs> and, and I get asked a lot when I do like podcast interviews and whatnot, I get asked a lot like, Hey, like, why don't people follow their programs? Let's imagine you have the perfect fitness program and you have, you know what you're supposed to be eating and you know what you're supposed to exercise, which we don't, by the way, that's a process, not a program anyway. But let's say you have the perfect thing. Somebody could say, hey, because of your genetics and because of your history and because of your bioindividuality, this is what you need to do to achieve optimum performance and health and fitness and stuff. People still won't do that. They won't. I won't. And I, I really love this health and fitness thing, but I won't do it. And the question is, why? Why don't people do that? And I've had various answers. Sometimes, you know, life gets in the way, things happen. Uh, there are other priorities, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately... What I believe is that most people see the vanity of pursuing health and fitness for the sake of health and fitness. Most people see that. Most people see that if they're lifting weights and eating only these sorts of foods for the rest of their life and they have a six pack or whatever they're shooting for, that those hundreds of thousands of hours they invested in, in time and worry and attention, eventually all that's going to end up in a grave somewhere. So why do it at all? Health and fitness could be the most vain, vain thing <laughs> that we pursue. And that could be said about literally anything that we make an idol out of. Health and fitness, sports. Some people make an idol out of their kids. And then it's a real intense shock when... They grow up and become independent and move away. And now what are we going to do with our time and energy? Vanity, vanity, all is vanity, says the writer of Ecclesiastes. Unless, unless it's done in service to God and in keeping his commandments. What does that mean? Well, Jesus summed up the entire law of the Old Testament in two sentences. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Here, there's a really interesting thing about this love God thing, because if, if you love God, if you say, I'm in service to something bigger than myself, I know that I'm here for a reason. I know that I've been created with all my very strange idiosyncrasies for a reason. Among those things is to bring glory to my creator and to, to play the best game with the hand I've been dealt. If I love God, I say, wow, I'm a very interesting creation and I'm going to treat me well. I'm going to treat me like that, like a temple of the most high. I'm not putting muddy bricks in this temple. I'm going to take good care of it, and I'm going to make the best use of what I've been given. When we love God, something interesting happens. We treat ourselves differently, and that expands to the people around us because that was Jesus's next summary, to love your neighbor as yourself. We start to treat other people with the same level of respect and love that we have for ourselves because we recognize ourselves as a treasure. You are a treasure. You are not a vain thing. God put you here for a reason. He made you exactly the way you are for an important reason. 
and he wants to do amazing things with you. And it's very possible that you're already doing amazing things that you don't even understand are having an impact on the world around you. And this 1% better journey could not be less futile. That was a very, very interesting double negative. It couldn't be more meaningful. That's what I'm trying to say. Because when you pursue better, that's what you're doing. You're saying, God, you gave me potential. I'm going to manifest all of that. I am going to to play the best game with the hand I've been dealt. I'm going to be a good steward of the blessings that I've been given. And because I'm doing that, then I'm going to be able to bring that same attitude to the people around me. There's this crazy thing in uh, defining dad bod. So five years ago, I started my own business. And my very first iteration of that business was defining dad bod. And I helped parents. That was my that was my goal. I was navigating fatherhood. And, and so I helped parents. It was really funny because it was called defining dad bond and all the marketing was for men, but I ended up with like half of my clients as women. So, well, <laughs> welcome to the betterment company. But what was interesting is I would be in consultations with people. Uh, I, I would say, what do you want to achieve in your health and fitness? And they would say things like, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to look good naked, blah, blah, blah. And, and no offense. If those are your goals, great. Those are your articulated goals. Great. But you need more than that. You need more than that. You need to understand that you're, you are moving toward more than that because 10 pounds is 10 pounds. You can stop eating for three days and you'll lose 10 pounds, whatever. What are you going to do with the confidence that you achieve when your, your clothes fit a little better? How is life going to be different for you? Because that's the question I would ask these people. I'd say, okay, okay. These are interesting goals. What about your kids? What kind of health and fitness do you want for them? And their answers were just so good. They were like, you know, I just, I want, I want them to feel confident and comfortable in themselves. I want them to be in good health. I want them to, to be able to do physical things that make them happy and, and they get to play and they're not in pain and, and that, you know, they don't feel bad about themselves and they love what they see in the mirror and, and they're at peace with how they're living in their life. They would say things like that. And I'm like, that's what I want for you. That's what I want for you. I don't want vain, stupid fitness goals. I want you to understand this betterment journey, the weights that you're lifting, the food that you're eating, the sleep that you're getting, the times when it's difficult and you don't feel like doing it, the way that you're changing your pantry and the, the way that you're, you're evaluating how your supplements are affecting you and the way that you're speaking to people in your life to encourage them and, and to move them along. In the way that you're being honest with your struggles and your obstacles, I want you to see that journey in service to your higher calling. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity, says the writer of Ecclesiastes. But I don't think this betterment journey is in vain. I think it is in service to loving God and keeping his commandments. And I hope that you're finding that in yourself as well. And what's really cool about this, what's really cool about this is... You don't have to understand that to do it. You can still go through the motions of becoming better and eventually look back and go, man, I'm really glad I did that three years ago. Man, I'm really glad that I've, I've stayed on that straight and narrow because now I get it. Now I get it. I didn't get it when I first started working out. I was real happy with the way my biceps looked in the mirror. Sometimes I was really motivated by gaining muscle and cutting body fat and all that stuff. I didn't get it, but I stuck with it. Because something inside of me, and we Christians would call that the Holy Spirit, other people might call it something different. Something inside of me said, this is important, Alex. This is very important. And it turns out, I didn't know at the time, it turns out I have a genetic disorder where if I did not pursue good nutrition for myself, if I did not regularly exercise, I would be drug addicted and in pain and very depressed. And I wouldn't be talking to you today. So to the extent that this is meaningful to you, it's it's just proof in the pudding. Thank you guys very much. Janet says, agreed. Scott says, amen. Scott didn't get it at first, but he kept going. <laughs> you keep up the good work, man. You're crushing it. And Janet says, this is about living a lifestyle that takes commitment and to make it a part of our lives. That's exactly right. There's nothing less vain than playing the best game with the hand you've been dealt. I'm going to say this. Last thing, uh, Jesus told a parable to his disciples about talents. It's a very, very interesting, interesting parable, especially since talent could mean a unit of money, or in our language, it could be a gift you've been given that, if uncultivated, won't result in any sort of skill or 
beauty. But anyway, at the very end of this parable, he says to his disciples, to whom much is given, much is expected. Well, you've been given a lot. I've been given a lot. I have more blessings than I can count. And I'm not saying that I have everything in the world. I'm just saying that when I look at my life, I say, wow, I don't deserve all this goodness. So I'm going to go make the most of it. And my prayer is that you will too. Guys, this has been Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Thank you for joining me for some reflections on the word vanity. Tomorrow, we're going to be serious, but in a different way, about some exercise movements to help you on your journey. Until then, it's just 1%. You got this. Thank you for joining us for your 1% Better today. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a raving review to tell others how Better Daily has helped you in your journey. If you want more Better Daily, download our app and join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live. Use code POD to get 25% off your subscription. That's P-O-D, all caps, to save 25% on your subscription. We all have a cross to carry. This later when we do it together. Go to betterdaily.live today.